Hmm. The sun hangs lower when I drive back to the pub and drag myself inside, still too unsure how to break the news. Around this time, the patrons usually start to trickle into the main lounge until it reaches a peak around midnight. Today, however, it remains thin. But considering what day it is, it isn't too worrisome for the kind of business G runs. He has always complained about the lack of a decent crowd on week start, although he doesn't really begrudge his customers for it. No one wants to start the week with a bad case of a hangover, after all. Even him. Which makes the concerned look he gives me come off a bit too odd. With the kind of danger we're in, and after what happened to Zack, this swiftly puts me on the edge, even before I can fully process and analyze the scene in front of me. Something wrong, G? G hums, but there's an undertone of annoyance in it, despite his casual and open movements. And only after he finishes wiping a tumbler and carefully sets it face down on the table does he give me an answer. The way he stares back at me honestly makes me squirm. It feels like I'm being stared down by a primary school teacher for sleeping in class again. Ah, nothing much. Monday's still a slow day for this place. But you, uh, might want to check on your friends, kid. Looks like someone woke up on the wrong side of the bed while you were out. Another question forms in my head along with a small, confused frown. Though before a single syllable slips past my mouth, he gestures his head on the far side of the main lounge. Isabella has settled, settled on one of the tables set in a corner in deep thought and with a scowl on her face. From the looks of it, it appears woke up on the wrong side of the bed is a complete understatement. Turns out sleep isn't just what some of us need. Even G appears to understand it. In spite of his efforts to look as unconcerned as possible, there's a tense set in his shoulders. A nervous edge lingers in his eyes as it occasionally flickers over Isabella. He doesn't want to deal with this, especially at the start of another busy week. Not that I know how. I don't even know what put her in such a bad mood. But the imploring gaze G directs at me leaves me with no other choice. It almost feels like he's guilting me into doing something about it. I hate that it's working. Oh. <clears throat> you know how I run this pub, kid. No fist fights, no cat fights, no people in sullen moods. Only good booze, bad puns, and off key singing. Go fix it before it turns into something chaotic. Thanks, G. <laughs> it's probably not as petty if Isabella's already in that state, but I give him a nod nevertheless. Sorry about this, G. He hums something under his breath for an answer and waves me off, turning away and returning to his work without another word. Even with a lack of a sizable crowd, he likes to keep busy. We're the same in that regard. Can't remain still, always has to stay moving, doing something, thinking, whatever keeps the brain at work. I leave him to it shortly after. Part of me wants to thank him for all the trouble he has taken for people he barely even know. <laughs> Once this is over, I should probably find some way. In the meantime, I have this immediately, wow. In the meantime, I have this immediate problem to go fix. Gotta get to this before it turns into a shitstorm. There's a strange lull in this area of the pub. People continue to trickle out instead of in, and this time only two tables remain occupied. Soon these people too will be gone, and the whole place will be devoid of anyone. Frankly, its current state already lends the place an entirely different vibe. Along with the soothing strum of strings and the steady beat of drums playing overhead, there's a calming sense to this. A far cry from times I've been here before. And perhaps it's for this reason why Isabella has chosen this place to retreat. She sits quietly in the furthest corner of the room, in one of the tables set right beside the windows. G usually keeps the curtain closed around this hour, but a small portion of it has been pulled back, revealing the bitty, the busy streets outside. Bitty, bitty street. <laughs> the bitty streets. The late afternoon light spills right through it, outlining her small form and pooling on the surface of the table where both her arms rest. Oh, in her hands, she's, she flips a piece of folded paper, turning it from side to side. Wow, turning it from one side to the other without any purpose. The letter. A small frown creases her forehead while she stares at it, yet there's something oddly tranquil in the picture she has unknowingly painted. Something I can't bring myself to disturb, if only for a few seconds. It's one of those moments again. The rare ones. The ones where she's too still, too quiet. A complete opposite of her usual self. 
but it's these that often leave a mark. Not her cheery disposition or her lively attitude, but these short few seconds of wordless silence when the softest sighs and the slightest movements sing louder. The smallest, minuscule things that tell you about the person and her strengths more than any words can express. It's these that carve a vivid memory, no matter how brief it lasts. And it breaks soon enough the second I pry the letter off her hands and flop down on the empty seat next to her. She glares at me, annoyed, and just like that, all of it melts away. Gone is the stillness, replaced quickly by the teasing and friendly jibes. Back again to what we're used to. What's easy, what's familiar, where every truth we hope to convey regrettably goes unsaid between us. You're going to destroy an important piece of evidence if you keep doing that, Belle. <laughs> this time, however, no retort comes from her. Without the letter to glare daggers at, she turns on her hands, now clenched tight in front of her. But she's far from angry. A bit upset, maybe. Who wouldn't be? This curse has already gone far too long. Has already taken one too many people from us. Regardless, Elisa Bella doesn't seem like she'll start shouting at me. At least compared to every other people I've aggravated, intentional or otherwise. Some light talk may just do the trick and coax her out of this mood. Come on. If you keep staring at the table like that, you're going to bore a hole on it. I really don't want to owe G a new table. He'll pick the most expensive one and leave me begging on the streets. She levels a quick glance at me, her expression dry and impassive enough to drain every color out of the room. It's as if I've just told her a terrible joke and she's expecting there'll be more of it. Really, now. She needs to give me more credit than that. My jokes are funny when I want them to be. And I really don't care. I'd even take pictures and post them online. Go away, Ash. I don't want to talk right now. Yet it sounds half-hearted at best. Like what's happening has already sapped every bit of energy in her, and all that's left are the words. Pretty soon those two will lose their meaning and leave a hollow shell in their wake. It's already unusual to see her like this. Everything has already gone to shit. I'd like at least this one thing to stay normal. So somehow... Somehow we manage. We continue for the better half of the hour, talking, joking, with her short, feeble responses and banter that never goes anywhere. But it's enough. In the grand scheme of things, amidst the chaos and death shadowing over us, it's these little inconsequential moments that matter. It's her smile, her laughter, when it finally, finally rings, easy and free of her burdens. Okay, I have another one. I don't want to hear it, Ashton. Go away. No, really, listen. I know someone who talks like an owl. Will you leave me alone if I bite and ask who? <laughs> That's a funny one. <laughs> I like that. A oh, pause. And then she frowns as realization slowly dawns on her. Confusion flashes fleetingly across her face before eventually settling on a grimace. <laughs> I like that joke. <laughs> oh. You gonna use it? I think so. <laughs> Suddenly, she hugs her arms closer to herself and looks away, perhaps in her best attempt to stay angry. To no avail. <laughs> In a matter of seconds, her shoulders shake with laughter she's trying to contain. You're awful, and I really hate you! Just, just leave! It's contagious, her mirth. <laughs> Soon, I'm joining her in it, briefly forgetting every problem that has piled up and continues to weigh down on us. Laughing without reservation or care, until only a familiar warmth lingers, once both our amusement ebbs away. Somehow with her, these things have always come easy. Feeling better? A little... You're still lame. But you're laughing right now. Only because your humor is terrible. Right. Keep telling yourself that. I know it's funny. And you know what? If you've kept frowning like that, your face might have cracked. That would have been really messy and ugly. Oh, also, our friend's dead because his face was cracked. If glares can kill, with the one she sends my way, I'll probably be dead by now. Seeing it directed my way, it takes only a few quick seconds for me to realize how she might have also taken my statement. How wrong and rude it might have sounded in her ears, however unintentional it is. I've never been good with words, but that's never an, accept an acceptable excuse, is it? No. <laughs> Suddenly, taking the brunt of her anger seems less complicated than correcting or explaining myself. Nevertheless, I try. I... what? Ah, oh, crap. Crap. 
Damn it, that was... That was so not what I meant. He's so good at that. <laughs> mm. I was just saying you look better when you're smiling. <laughs> Her glare doesn't even wane. In fact, I think it intensified like the brewing storm. In the face of it, under the sharpness of her stare and her annoyance, I do what any person with a good sense of self-preservation does. Keep my mouth shut and shift my attention elsewhere. The crowd outside looks very interesting today. Maybe I should... Thanks, Ash. She utters all of it in a voice too small, too quiet. But when I turn to her, only those words, her gratitude, resonate throughout the whole room. Not the soft clinking of silverware somewhere, nor the last strains of music fading into silence above us. Instead, it's the meaning behind her gaze as she holds mine that lingers. Steady, unflinching, and open, in the same way she looked at me all those years ago, with bright eyes and an expression softening into a tender smile. I didn't understand it then. How easy it is for her to wear her heart on her sleeve, how she never shies away from expressing herself, even among people she barely knows. How she can go through everything without losing herself. Now... Now it's among the hundreds of the thousands that hang unspoken between us. Trivial, little things with worth still, too big to put into words. Either because it's too early or because there's never really a proper time. For now, though, this? This'll do. That'll do, pig, that'll do. Hmm. Until the moment itself dwindles. Until reality pulls us back in, reminding us of the things we've set aside in its favor. What was that about earlier? You look like you're about to wage war on that letter. Oh, it's... it's nothing. You probably won't like it when you hear it. Spill. Maybe? You haven't said anything yet, so how am I supposed to decide how to react? A small frown returns to her face, although it lacks the same anger from just a few minutes ago. The bitterness stays. Now there's also uncertainty. It takes another minute until she speaks again. This time, she doesn't meet my eye. My one eye. I was just thinking... Maybe... Maybe we should go back to the mansion. Blood freezes in my veins. Immediately before I can even think further on what to say, my mouth's moving. A disapproval ready at the tip of my tongue. Wasn't he thinking the same thing? He was like, we should go back to the mansion, because that's where it all started. Isabella, you know that's... I... I know, Ash. I just thought... I just thought we'd find something in there. That if I go back, we'll get the answers we need. I found the letter there, so maybe, right? It's not that I don't agree with her. Hell, I've been considering the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the only lead we have, after all. But it's not going to be a simple walk in the park. Who knows what we might find in there if I bring her with me. I won't be able to guarantee her safety. She'll be in even greater danger. Hence, alone. If there's a need to go back to that accursed place, to that accursed place, I'm doing it on my own. No! Whether she agrees with this plan is inconsequential. Stupid. With Zack and Rebecca gone, her well-being is my top priority, and I'm not just about to drag her in there with me. So I tell her as much, despite the determination and desperation in her eyes. It's dangerous, I can't let you do that. So... Part of me feels like both of them will get her, she'll obviously uh, re argue against anything we say. I, I'm not sure how he's going to say them is the thing. Well, there's the question of one of them, she'll, one of these, I feel like she'll likely have a much more convincing argument against him type of situation. So the way I imagine he'll say it's dangerous and she'll be like, I know we're going together and he'll mm -hmm. be like, no, it's too dangerous for you. And she's like, well, I can't let you go alone kind of thing. But if he does the, I can't let you do that. Maybe he'll say it in a way like, I care about you too much. Mm -hmm. And then they'll kiss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. It's like one of these is obviously a uh, plus relationship and minus relationship sort of thing. I, I just, it's hard to know how he's going to say them, I guess. <sighs> yeah. Which one's going to come off as the greater concern? All right. 
and I'm curious. I'm assuming either one we pick, he's still gonna go by himself. I don't think there's a way around that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If if. I don't know, because I don't want him to go by himself. I don't want him to go by himself either. Because he well, did it just earlier in the park. He make the argument of like, isn't the, is the ghost just splitting us off from each other so it can kill us one by one? Right. So hey, yeah, I got this idea. Let's split off <laughs> so it can kill us one by one. <sighs> I guess I'm leaning. Uh, I was first. My first initial instinct was the first one. Same. But thinking about it more, I lean more towards the second. But I don't know if it's because I'm now overthinking it. Yeah, I don't know enough to have a preference, to be honest. I see merit in mm -hmm. either one. Because my first instinct on the first one was expressing the danger and wasn't a prohibitory statement. Of course, the second one is a prohibitory statement. Right. That's why... Yeah. I was initially against the second one. But then the second one might sound really nice, like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I don't know. Maybe it should be the first. Do the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> why do you say do the bottom one? I just... I'm... I don't know, because he's not going to say it nice. But he means it nicely. Do, do the bottom. <sighs> why? Do the bottom! Why? Because no, I, I want to know why you're thinking that so I can decide if it's a good <laughs> argument or not. Um, because he's going to say, Isabella, I can't let you do that. I can't let you go back to the mansion. She's going to be like, that's how we get this over with. And that's how we'll fix it. And blah, blah, blah. And we'll finish it. And he'll be like, I'll do it myself. I care about you too much. And she'll be like, Ash, you're being stupid. And then he'll kiss her to nope. shut her up. But he's <laughs> a very, he can be very forceful. So like if we're, if we pick the, I can't let you do that. She will stay here. She won't go with us. I don't think we can keep her. Well, I'm saying like, I don't know if, if she will be able to, if there's a choice in this, but I just know that the second one, she is definitely not coming with us. The first one, I don't know. Okay. That's my thought. Okay, then do the first. Okay. If I'm understanding your argument for why you want to do the second one, I think we should do the first one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I could be wrong. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. All right. Anything to keep her safe. It's dangerous. Forget it, Belle. You're not going back to that mansion. <laughs> <laughs> I regret this decision already. <laughs> What about- This isn't up for debate. Do you really think they'll just let you in? Do you really think they'll give a damn if you walk in there carrying that stupid letter of all things? No, but there has to be something we can tell them. Ash, they were with me during the open house. They have to know. They're in as much trouble as we are. They're living in that place. That ghost woman came from there. Both her and the letter. Something's in that house, Ash. And whatever it hides might be the only thing that'll get us out of this mess. All right. Supposing you do find an answer there, what happens? Let's say that by some dumb luck, you got inside and found something. I don't even have to bring up what they did to Zack. In fact, what they'll do to you is the least of our problems. What if you see her again? What if she goes after you? What are you going to do? It's not like we have any other choice. Besides, I'm pretty sure you've already thought of the same thing. Admit it. That doesn't mean I'm going to let you run straight into trouble. What you're planning to do is risky. For you. Give it up, Isabella. Zach's already gone, and if you... Realization comes way too late. My throat closes up as soon as I realize what has just slipped out of my mouth. There is supposed to be a speech, damn it. Words carefully picked to ease people into the idea, especially her, who has always seen Zack as a decent older brother. She never had as family. The way her expression shifts from terror to disbelief, then to anguish, makes the horrible lump in my throat feel more unpleasant. 
There's a sorrow in it, palpable enough as the meaning of what I've said sinks in. A pain I can't even hope to understand, one that we'll deal with in our own ways. I can't even bring myself to look her straight in the eye. Unexpectedly, Mar Isabel merrily clams up, no resistance, no further argument like I've come to expect from her. She doesn't even shed a single tear. Uncharacteristic. Just a silence that stretches far too thin, till the air in the whole room grows awkward and unsuffocating. A standstill that gets us nowhere. Although, if there's one thing our talk has wonderfully succeeded at, it's making me feel like a total asshole and hypocrite. Mm-hmm. And I'm considering my plans tonight. Sure, I can tell her, but what good would it do? I do intend to tell G before leaving tonight. He has to know if he's going to be keeping an eye on her for me. One person is already enough, however. Hell, simply letting someone in on the plan makes me iffy. Broadening the circle and revealing too much would just cause another pointless concern. But something ha but someone has to be aware at least of where I'm heading off to in case... In case things don't pan out. Expect the worst, even if only intended to do a quick survey of the place. In my own words, risky. Isabella doesn't need to be burdened with the worry my entire scheme entails. I like to think that, yes, to some extent, she understands, even if she does not entirely agree with me, the dilemma's clear in her. Otherwise, her scowl wouldn't, wouldn't have a deeper set to it. Her lips wouldn't be pressed in, thin, in a thin line, or her hand would no longer be balled into fists. She would have pushed that argument. If she doesn't, and I know she has no lack of things to say... Maybe it's because she's already thought of the same thing. Maybe my words have made her come to her senses. Either way, it's best that we simply leave it here for now. I've already said enough. Can we look at the relationship thing? Yeah, I'm worried about that. I think it went down a tiny Just bit. slightly, yeah. No. Oh, it's not the outcome I wanted. Without another word, I stand up at the same time. Footsteps shuffle from the pub's entrance and cheerful clatter suddenly fills the room as the group of people enters. It's all the distraction I need. Muttering excuse, I beat a hasty exit out of the main lounge and leave her on her own, despite the disappointing look on her face. Before Isabella can say what she's been mulling over, before the last imploring glance, she directs my way, forces me to change my mind. <gasps> it's another lasting image that firmly etches itself in my memory. What? One that spurs the conscience, among other things. It said something about her look, making him change his mind. I just hope I won't regret what I've chosen for myself tonight. Ow. No, he said before her look makes him oh. change his mind. Galway Shawl's Monday night crowd, although small and barely occupies a quarter of the whole pub, provides an ample enough cover for anyone who wishes to leave the place unnoticed. Just exactly what I need tonight, with lively music and chatter slipping out mostly unseen, becomes a piece of cake. Without too much trouble, soon enough, I find myself standing outside onto the chilly Luxburn night. The gust of wind picks up shortly after I step out, carrying the telltale smell of impending rain. I'll give it about an hour or two before it starts. From the looks of it, tonight will be another downpour, maybe even stronger than the one I've had this morning. On instinct, I hunch further into my jacket, hugging its thick material closer to my body while I weave my way through the lines of empty cars in the parking lot. The letter crinkles in my pocket with each step I take, though I pay it no mind as I hurry toward my car. I've nicked it minutes ago from Isabel's belongings on my way out. If this is all connected, I need this damn piece of paper with me. However ridiculous it sounds, I'm sh quite sure it won't be missed either, but I can't waste time here and wait for her to find out, can I? For hour four hours is all I'm giving myself to get this done. Regardless of how generous that is, each second's just as important as the next. But as with every plan, problems crop up at the last second. It's particularly a universal rule. And it does. 
in the form of a lone figure waiting for me next to my car. Ooh. Ah. Isabella <sighs> turns just as I near, her mouth curving into a small smile. She offers no greeting except for a shy tilt of her head. Even as my pace slows and I look at her with the unvoiced questions in my eyes, she remains wordless, merely throwing her head back and shifting her attention up at the starless sky when I come up to stand beside her. Another gust of wind blows as she breathes a heavy sigh, weary thick with something close to a resignation. The breeze carries all of it away while she hugs her arms closer to herself to keep warm, which raises the question why she's out here. It was already heavy with the promise of rain, with clouds obscuring the view. There's really nothing left to look at but a dark blanket of nothingness. Still, she stands here just as if she's intentionally waiting for everything to fall. That, or she's here for some other reason. Belle, I can't bring you with me. I know. I won't ask you to. Go back inside. G will keep an eye on you while I'm gone. You can trust him. Don't worry. I will. In a while. I just want a bit of fresh air. Well, don't stay out there too long. It's going to rain soon. It'll probably be even heavier than the downpour we had this morning. You wouldn't want to be caught in it. I give her a shoulder I give her shoulder a reassuring squeeze before walking past her and heading to my car. No two steps further though, something pulls the back of my jacket, catching the fabric in a firm grip and halting my movements. Isabella, I need to go. She refuses to meet my eyes, but her hold remains tight. There's a worried crease between her eyebrows and her lips quiver ever so slightly when she speaks. In a small voice brimming with a different kind of desperation I can't quite place. Rebecca's gone. Zach too. She draws in a breath, soft, slow, lined with enough sorrow that it hitches. And if that thing takes you too, the rest of it falters, but the meaning, the gravity, in each of her words rings loudly above the passing breeze, hanging over us, lingering in between. A small little thing that spurs me into silence, like the wind has suddenly been knocked out of me in one fell swoop. No words were form. Not even a single coherent thought. And so in place of it, in place of everything untold we've taken for granted, I draw her in. Gently, quietly, pulling her against me until my arms settle around her shoulders. Ash? For a fleeting second she freezes, startled, and looks up at me with hesitation and a silent question in her eyes. Whatever answer she finds in mine, eventually she allows this. She folds herself into me, buries her face into my shoulder, and settles her arms on my sides. Unsure, uncertain. It'll be over soon. I'll figure it out. I'll find a way to get us out of this. But no matter what happens, I want you to promise that you will stay alive until then. Because if I lose you to her as well, I have no idea what else would keep me grounded. When all has been said and done, I rest my forehead against hers, eyes closed and simply taking in her warmth. Desperation still clings woven into every breath every sigh, but at the heart of it is this, her. No words are said, even as we part. But I let this be the last thing I commit to memory before slipping inside my car and driving off. <laughs>